In this one, we're here with Megan and her beautiful 911 Carrera 4S, the 992 generation. Let's learn more about her story and how she got to this car. So thank you, Megan, for joining me on the channel. Beautiful car. It looks great in this garage. I kind of want you to keep it if you can. <laughs> but let's learn a little bit more about how you got to this car. You know, you seem like from your Instagram post and the stories I've heard from others, you're a bit of a car, car nut. Yeah. You've had a, a serious journey of cars. Can you kind of start us back to the journey of how you got here? Yeah, for sure. So when I was growing up, I grew up really, really poor. Mm. And so our family vacations were usually driving around for many hours at a time in a, in a broken down van, going to some random place on vacation. And what I started to do was play a game with myself to pass the time and, and to also get my mind off, is this car gonna break down? Are we going to be stranded? And so what I started doing was looking at other cars and mm. seeing if, could I learn which cars they were? Could I identify them from either the, you know, the front headlights or the taillights. And so I started this game with myself when I was really little to sort of pass the time. And I think that's how I started getting into cars. It sounds so strange, but I think that's really how I started getting that's into cars. That's how you started learning about the type of cars. Yeah. And, and I could, like as a kid, I could, I could name every single make that's and a, model. That's amazing. Yeah, I wasn't mechanical, but I could recognize, I knew every single make and model. And then um, I started high school and I, I asked one year for Christmas for a subscription to Car and Driver. And uh, like wow. this was old school. I used to get the actual magazine I, in the I mail. I still watch their YouTube channel. Yeah, no, that's well, it's my homepage actually at work <laughs> is Car and Driver. So I think that's really how I got into cars. Finally able to start buying cars, I started off with Volkswagen. Mm. And um, I had a Jetta and I loved my Jetta. Like I just loved it. And you know, as I got a little more successful in my career, I moved up to Audi. Nice. Um, same thing, like I loved my first Audi. I loved every Audi what I had. What was the first Audi? My first Audi was a 2012 A4 nice. um, S-Line. And I chipped the engine, I lowered it, I put an exhaust on, I changed out the grill. Like I took, I debadged it so people might think it was an S4. Uh, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that car. But where did this sort of modding bug come from in that, for that car? Like, well, you know what it was? I just, I literally could not afford an S4. And uh, back in 2012, I think it was the 4.2 liter V8 and it sounded so good. And, yeah. and you know, I just couldn't afford it. So I had this little four cylinder, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a three liter or 2.9 liter, I can't remember. Um, so I wanted to mod it so it would sound like a V8, like I've always been searching for that sound of a V8. Crazy car nut here. <laughs> That's neat. What was, that, what was after the so-called S4? So after the, yeah, so after the so-called S4, I got an actual S, ah. S4 and it was amazing. It was manual, it was white. I did a bunch of things to it too. I didn't chip the engine, but I did a bunch of sort of mods to it. That was and the I, B8 generation. It was, yeah. Oh, it, but I had that I one. loved yeah. it, it was such a great car. And then I realized I want a little more power. So I upgraded to the RS5. Uh, so I had a 2018 Nardo Gray RS5. That's a beautiful car. I remember it's seeing beautiful that. Beautiful car. <laughs> and you know, I wish I kept it as my winter. Yeah. Yeah. So but I you, do regret giving it up. I regret giving it up. So you, you traded that one in for this beautiful I did. thing I did. right here. Yes. Yeah. So no real regrets there. Um, this is the four. So I had always driven my cars year round. And the great thing about Audi is the Quattro system. Yeah. Like you can't. You can't beat it. Yeah. And um, so I was planning on driving this year round. And um, then I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> I chickened out a little bit. I thought, that's a lot of money. It's kind of a low car and I want to lower it. So maybe I should just pick up a, a winter car. So yeah. I picked up a, an S4. That's, so that's my winter car now. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it came kind of full circle back to the S4, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I wish I kept my 2015 S4 because it was manual and uh, my 2019, yes. it, you can't get them anymore in manual. So, that, so. that's an interesting uh, fact here as well. You love your cars to be manual. I do, I that's, do. That's, to me, it's just more engaging. Yeah. It's a little more fun. And, and for me, I feel safer driving in the winter with a manual car. Yeah. I feel like I have more control. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Uh, you know, for the longest time, I was an Audi kind of nut as well. Yeah. 
So I'd stay in the Audi brand as far as I could. Yes. And then the next upgrade to an S4, when yeah. they couldn't give you a manual, I'm like, man, I'm bummed out by yeah. this. Yeah. Um, so I'm itching for a manual to get yeah. back into driving it. But I agree, yeah. winter, you're, you could choose the gears you yeah. want, when you want. Yeah, you just feel, and maybe it's psychological, I feel like I grip the road better yeah. if I have a manual in, in the snow and in the slush, yeah. yeah. So during that whole journey, did you know a lot of the guys uh, in our in our in our group? Like, I well, you know what? So I met Gally. So I when I got my A4, I joined the Audi club, and uh, it was white. And Gally had a white S4, mm. and um, I was I didn't know what all of these weird rust spots on my car were. Break and he's down. like, I will show you how to clay bar your car. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take care of this. And he came over to my house and he, he showed me how to clay bar. And uh, that's how I met Eric. And he was part of this Audi club. He's like, come join our club. And uh, then he migrated to, uh, BMW. to BMW. And, but when I got my RS5, he still invited. He's like, come. Like, I said, mm. I can't come. You know, mm. it's a BMW meet. <laughs> he's like, no, the guys really want to see it. And so that's how I met everybody else. So what was the, so I mean, you've had the Audi, you've been in the Audi world for so long. So long. What was the motivation to jump into Porsche? Yeah, so great question. So I, I my heart is still with Audi. Like mm. I consider myself more of an Audi person than a Porsche person. Um, <laughs> so when I was upgrading from an RS5, I, um, I looked at the R8, of course. Mm. I, you know, when you're, you go to the top of the line, it was the R8. Honestly, this is a much more practical car. Yeah. So the size, there were two factors that made me not get the R8. Um, one was the size of the frunk. It wasn't yeah. quite big enough uh, for a carry-on, and I travel a lot for work. Mm. And I thought, if I can't get myself to the airport, then it's kind of a useless car. The second thing was the back seat. Yeah. So I have a dog named Cassidy, and um, I never had children. I had a dog, and she's 13, and she can fit in the back seat of this car. Yeah. And the R8 has no, no back, back seat. Seats. Yeah. And it's just at her weight, it's dangerous to be in the front seat because of the airbags. Mm. Yeah. So um, yeah, so those were the two deciding factors. I thought, okay, then I'm getting a 911. <laughs> there is no other recipe of a of a car that you can get that has the back seat. Yes. The frunk that has yeah. the practicality, the yeah. depth to put two carry-on bags, yes. so you can take you Easily. and a partner and go on a road trip. Yeah. I, I agree because that those were some of the things that kind of pushed me towards the brand as well. Yes, yeah. You know, I wanted a sports car, but yeah. I wanted a little bit of practicality. Yes. I have a kid coming, yep. and I want to be able to take the kid around and yeah. do things with them as yeah. a family. Um, and the Porsche brand was the one that kind of gave you the sports car look but the practicality yeah. of the sedan as yeah. well. And people laugh. When yeah. I say this is actually a really practical car, but I know people laugh at me. I take it to Costco. I've gone to the garden center. I've had this, the front <laughs> full of bags of dirt, like no problem. Yeah, and, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, it's, it actually is practical. Yeah. It was more practical before I lowered it. <laughs> now it's a little <laughs> less practical. Do you still but, take uh, it to Costco? And... I do still go to Costco, <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. speaking of lowering, let's uh, yeah. maybe switch into the mods that you've sure. done to this, what, what would you say are some of the, the top three things that you've done to this car now? So yeah, far? so I think the biggest thing that I did that changed the looks of the car was lowering it. Yeah. So I'm on Bilstein coilovers yeah. and I lowered uh, 25 mils in the rear, 35 mils in the in wow. the front. Wow, you got those numbers up in there already. Yeah, well, it was, a big, right it was a big decision. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I played with it. I didn't want to go too low, but I wanted it to, you know, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I wanted it to look different. Um, and the gap always bugs me. Like, it always, always bugs me. It looks and, good now. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So the, I think lowering it was, was big. Number two, I'd have to say the HRE wheels. They're I mean, <laughs> I didn't think this color would work. I was so nervous. Um, you know, Lucas helped me out choosing yeah. and with Fitman and thank goodness. He's you know, a good influence. Some he, would say a bad influence. He's but <laughs> a great influence, a bad influence for your wallet, I would <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah, that's the kind of influence Lucas is. Yeah, you're like so yeah, so those are the, um, I think those are the two. And then um, I've got the sport exhaust, but it wasn't mm. quite loud enough. Okay. So I put uh, some Soul Performance cats on it oh, nice. just to make it a little bit louder. I didn't want to be overly obnoxious, mm. but just I wanted a little bit louder. Not deleting the muffler in between to do a straight pipe right. where we assume it much louder. Much louder. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with it. We'll see if next year it's still not louder. I think we get used to it. Yeah. We're like, oh, it's not that Don't loud. Don't want to be louder. You know, my yeah. car is loud in the neighborhood. It's not loud at meets. If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> What's next on the mod list for this car? Do you have any other plans? 
other than maybe making the exhaust louder? Yeah, you know, I don't, I, I know this sounds terrible. I don't really have any other plan. Like I'm pretty happy with yeah. it the way it is. I, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. When I first got the car, I, I wasn't convinced on the color. So mm. I thought about wrapping it. Yeah. Um, now that I have my new rims, I think I'm really happy. I'm glad. It, it changes. I'm not going to wrap it, so I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't have any, uh, you know, I've done some cosmetic stuff. You know, I've done the puddle lights and, you know, the front liner. I think I've I think it's perfect, you know, yeah, and, and I have to thank uh, Eric and Lucas for saving this car so you didn't go off and like wrap right. it in the car. They totally <laughs> saved it. They saved it. They're like, Megan, don't wrap it. I'm telling you. And and Eric said to me, I'm a financial guy. Like if you wrap it and you don't like it, you literally throw your money out the window. Yeah. If you get new wheels and you don't like it, you can sell them. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, actually, that makes a lot of sense. OK, let's go with the let's go with the wheels. <laughs> Great choice. Yeah. And great color, yeah, beautiful. Like on the rollers that we did, it looked they amazing. They catch the sun. Yeah, they catch the and sun. just the reflection, and yeah. it's got kind of multi tones to it, right? Yeah, well, it's a it's called brush champagne yeah. is the color. So I think the brushing is, um, and I believe HRE does a lot by hand. Yeah, um, yeah, brushing so mostly. It just yeah. has different tones in it, which hides a lot of dirt, which is great. Great, and it also picks up different colors mm. depending on the light. You initially got this car for the intention for you to drive it in the winter yes. all year long. Yes. Now you're not doing it. Right. <laughs> Do you kind of look back and go, oh, sh I should have got the Carrera S instead of the 4S? Oh, good question. Um, no, I don't, <laughs> but I probably would have saved some money had yeah. I done that. Yeah. Um, no, but what I do regret is I have a heated steering wheel mm. and I use it. I used it this morning, Yeah. Um, but I don't Chilly. have a heated steering wheel yeah. on my uh, S4, which I really wish I had. So I have a heated well, steering wheel on my summer car and not on my Maybe that's car. the next mod. You swap out the steering wheels. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, maybe, don't, don't maybe. <laughs> Would you yeah. consider this your forever car then? Now that you've done all this. Yeah, story. I I really think it is. I. I feel like my whole life I've been like upgrading, yeah. right? Slowly upgrading and at a certain point, I mean, they're far nicer cars than this for sure. But um, for me, practicality is key. And I like a little bit of attention, but I don't like a lot of attention. Yeah. And I think as soon as you get into like Lambo, Ferrari territory, it's, it's, it's you loud. can't go anywhere, yeah. right? And I like that this is, a little bit of a sleeper car like yeah. the the color's a bit muted it's a little bit of a sleeper car yeah i i, I agree with that as well yeah. no no tune to increase the horse no i'm not going to yeah. no it, i think you it's, know, it's a interesting. well balanced car right it's 450 so it's the same horsepower as my rs5 but it feels so different yeah much lighter it, i think it's lighter yeah. so it just is faster and um i think this is like the I, I don't need more car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, I, I feel like this is a trick question for all the folks that I've asked yeah. the, this on. Yeah. Everyone says, yeah, it is my forever car. Yeah. yeah and, and at the end of the day, like things change yes. and something else comes along. You're like, oh, I'm going to take that one. It's true. Because <laughs> who knows what's going to come out yeah. in a few years yeah, from yeah. now, right? Yeah, you yeah. Don't, we don't know. But I, you know, I'm a few years from retirement, just a few. So I, I bought this thinking this is my retirement summer car yeah so i think it's my forever car we'll see that's awesome yeah and if you had to pick one thing about this car yeah. that makes it special to you the one reason that you will go towards this yes. over any other cars yeah. when you get wake up and i'm like oh i have to yeah. go somewhere yeah what would that be <laughs> this is gonna sound silly but you know what i love the most about this car is my aero kit i love my wing ah uh, yeah so, and I think the reason I love it is because when I was specking the car, I was so on the fence about it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to be too like boy racer. You know, I'm going to take this car to work. I've got a professional yeah. job. Like, so I was really like, should I, shouldn't I? And I, I specced it sight unseen, like everybody does yeah. these days. And um, I, I got it. And I'm so happy I did because the pandemic has had so many stop sales yeah. on the wing. The wing, yeah. So I think it, it it just makes it look special yeah. to me. I, it makes, I love when I'm driving and I see in my mirrors, I see like the little tips. Well, when we were chasing, or when you were behind us doing the B-roll the B sequences, yeah. when the car, when we were doing the turns and you could see the wing kind of peek off to the side, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's honestly, that's what I think sets, sets this car apart for me is, is really the aero kit wing. Can I also say that the aero kit for this car makes it look like the previous gen gt3 okay so it does yeah. so when i took this car to tromblant last year you were there i yeah. saw you at the track 
um, some of the guys who work for Porsche, they're like, I don't know if they, I wasn't trying to look like a GT3. Like I wasn't trying to build like a poser car. I have a sunroof and I cannot have a car without a sunroof. I so agree. That's, I, that's really yeah. key for me. And um, yeah, so I got a few interesting comments about the combination of the wing. It's a fake yeah, yeah. GT3. Um, I don't, like I don't care. I no. love it and I think it looks great. And I, I wasn't trying to build a, 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 you know, I wasn't trying to do like what I did with my A4, trying yeah. to build a fake S4. That wasn't the case. No, no. But I, I love it. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, in my eyes, it looks super good as well. Yeah. And the Porsche ethos is that they always take the GT3 and put that into the next generation Right. 4S, yep. Carrera S. Yep. So you got a lot of elements, design elements that carry forward into the next generation. Yeah. And then they push the boundaries of the next GT GT3 and the GT3 RS even further. Right. So the next generation of our cars will have, yeah. will have elements yep. of the GT3 in yeah. the entry Porsches. Yeah. So Which I think it's, cool. it, it's, it's not trying to be a, yeah. a GT3 wannabe type yeah. thing. I yeah. think it looks cool. Thank you. Uh, and it's a beautiful car. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, and by the way, her Instagram handle is Meg and Class. Megan Cass. Megan Cass. Megan Cass. Yeah. Can we touch on that just a quick yeah, before we sure. end? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I joined Instagram um, before I had this car and I wasn't even thinking about Instagram for my car, yeah. to be honest, at the time. Um, and as I mentioned, my dog's name is Cassidy. And uh, so my name, Meg, and like, and there's cast. A twist it just there. yeah, there's a little bit of a twist there. So, but it's funny because a few weeks ago somebody asked me if my car was named Cassidy, and I thought that's such a strange question. Like, why are you asking me that? And then I looked at my IG and I thought, well, that's why they're asking because yeah. there's like four pictures of Cassidy, and every other picture is, is, just, uh, is my car. It'd be cool so. if you combine Cassidy and the car in a couple of pictures. Well, you know what? So when I first got the um, when I first got the car, um, I she fit in my front. Mm. So I put her, I was trying to show like, how practical is this car? I'm, you know, I've got a big bucket of balls. I'm going to play tennis. I've got Cassidy in the front and uh, yeah. And she loves the back seat. actually. She, the, the back seats of this one are sort of scooped yeah. and just the size she is, she fits perfectly and she just loves it. That's amazing. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Megan. It, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you kind of bringing the car here, parking it. I wish you would just leave it. <laughs> You know, I have an RS5 there for you if you want to take it back. I love the RS5. <laughs> I really do. Um, anyways, thank you very much. Thank you I so appreciate much. appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care. All right.